last last month yeah last month my friend she texted me in the middle of the night and she said she asked me to preach today and then i was like okay i can preach it's okay but she said you have to preach in english and then i'm like you know shocked you know you know you know my english you know right so um again um don't listen to my english the grammar and the pronouns going to be different so but um i believe the lord's going to talk to you today and he's going to touch you he's going to refresh your spirit today are you ready for today yeah. amen amen i'm so excited about it um what if we stand up and sing again that uh praise sounds one more time oh, yeah. amen come on let's work Let's welcome uh, for the worship team. <laughs> Amen. I am free. We're gonna dance and praise Him, no matter what's going on, no matter what you know what I speak. You don't understand it at all. It's okay. We're gonna praise Him. All right. Woo. Excited. Come on, put your hands up. Do you? 
much. Thank you. Say to your neighbor, you are free. Amen. Freedom. Freedom. How many of you love to be freedom? Free. We love to be free. In every nation, in every people's, every country, they fight for freedom. We love to be freedom. Right? You guys understand my English? Cool. Great. Okay. We love to be free. The prisoner waiting for set free. Every student wake for Friday. Right? Friday is a free day. We love Friday. And yes, <laughs> every person who work, we, 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 we wake for the day off, plus a payday. Yes, right. We love to be get free. But here's the things. The opposite of freedom is fear. When you get fear, that fear is going to pull you down from the freedom. The fear is not from God. The scripture said, God doesn't give us the fear, the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, but he gives us the spirit of love and what? Sound of mind. In many situations that we're facing with today, maybe in your education, maybe in your business, there is so much things to be, you know, afraid of it. We're facing with some um, thing that, and you should like, you know, you, we're facing with something that we can be, we never expect it. How did, I never, ex, like, I never expect these things going to happen. You know what I'm talking about. We're afraid of it. But God doesn't want us to believe in those fear and live in those depression and stress and live in those condemnations. He wants us to be set free from everything because the freedom brings the victory and the freedom brings the power. He wants us to believe in the freedom. He wants us to believe in the beyond and above of anything else. That's what His will for us. Amen. Amen. But here's two kinds, two kinds of freedoms. Is one from the world, which is also called the devil. The freedom from the world make you depressed, make you stress, give you stress. Because the devil want us to kill and his purpose is to kill you and to destroy you. So that you can't bring the glory of God. That's what his purpose. But God, he wants us to believe in the freedom. But when we go back to the fear, those freedom can, you know, those fear pull, can pull you down from your freedom. Go to, um, let's look at, the scripture, no, not the scripture, the story of Peter. Peter was so, uh, wanted to be walked on the water. And his desire pleased to Jesus and he walked on the water. You all know about this story. And um, he walked on the water, but all of a sudden he realized that he walked in the water, which is supernatural things, and he gets scared and he gets fear of it. Then what happened to him? He sink into the water. That's what happened to us too when we're afraid of something. That's what happened to us too when we are afraid of something. That things may pull you down. That things may um, lose, make you looser. That things make getting away from God. So here's, but 
Yeah, so Peter, he let the fear, the fear reign over him. That's, what, that's, why this, this, that, that's why this thing happened to him. But today, when we let Jesus reign over us, he's going to be, he's going to be our Lord and he's going to take over those things that we're afraid of it. And we're going to have victory over those things. We're going to overcome it. And we will see the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 8 verse 36 if you would please. I'm going to read through... I'm going to read from the um, New Living Translations. Um, John chapter 8, verse 36. So if the Son set you free, you are truly free. Amen. So if the Son set you free, you are truly free. The truly freedom is only by Jesus. Jesus, only Jesus can give you the truly freedom. You may think when you um, have fun your, with your, some of your friends and drink, you know, alcohol and you went to, you know, some of the place that you really liked it, you know, and you enjoyed it. And you think this is free. I mean, you, you think you get freedom. But after all of that, things, you realize that you didn't really enjoy it. And you realize that that's what, this is not what I'm supposed to do. This is not real freedom. But today Jesus came to the world to give you a real freedom to you and me and to set us free from the sin. We born from sin, we are a sinner. We love to do sin. But God, John 3, 16 said, But God so loved the world, and he gave his only beloved son. How many sons he has? Just one. Just one. But he gave us to us. Why? He loved you so much. Why? Why he loved you so much? He sees you that you are valued to him. He accepts you as who you are. He loves you so much. That's why he gave his only son. Jesus came to the world, died on the cross, rose again on the third day. And he gave us the victory to who? To us. Why he gave us the victory to us? That victory is going to give you the strength to finish your race. The strength to live your day, even though you're facing with some of, you struggle with some of the things that you ex, ex, unexpected. The victory is going to give you, live over those things. That victory brings the freedom. That is a real freedom. Amen. Amen. Go to the ex, um, uh, the third chapter. We all know about the story of Paul and Silas. They were in the prison. They were in the jail. Imagine about it. It's not going to be happy. They, I mean, they're not going to be happy. I mean. But you know what they're doing? They praise God. They sing the song and they worship God in the middle of those terrible things. Why it could be happen? Why did they can't why they can't sing I mean how can it be happen? Because the love of God covered them and they stay in the love of God and that love make them make them set free from anything. That love make them that love I mean that freedom not hold them Hold, hold them down. I mean, they don't really care about what is happening in the world. They just praise God and worship Him.
Let me show you something so that you, you might clear and get it. Let's say this is God. And this is you and me. And you stay in the love of God. You stay in the love of God inside here. That love covers everything. And the devil come in against you and try to pull you down and put some, you know, something that you might be afraid of it. He tries to against you from the side, from every part. But he can't hurt you. He can't hit you. Why? Because you stay in the love of God. He can't, he, he tried, he really tried it, but he can't hit you because you stay in the love of God. In that inside, you stay in the freedom of God. You freely, you, I mean, you free, you free inside of the love of God. You free, you stay inside there. You free. But here's the things, here's the difference. When you stay, uh, when you get out from the love of God, the devil tried to fight you against you and he pull you down and destroy you and kill you. What happened? You done. You done. That's what happened to us all the time. You get depressed. You say, I want to die. I don't know what's happening. I don't really get it what's happening to me. That's what you said. But you go back to God and you stay in his love and you stay in his freedom. Nothing can hold you down. Nothing can fight you against you because his love cover you. No matter what happened in your situation, no matter what happened in the world, you are not afraid of it. You know that God loves you. You have confidence on it. Amen. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Let's go to, um, let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 38. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither dead or life, neither angels nor, nor demons. Demons. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you stay in the love of God, like I said, your enemies try to pull you down and destroy your life and try to kill you but you are not afraid of it you stand you still you stand still on the lord and you you stay in the love of god they're gonna try a hundred times maybe a thousand times but they can't do it because you you are in the love of god that love captured you like this nothing nothing can separate you nothing can separate you his love is never changing. His love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love will never change. No matter you are a loser, he still loves you. Even your friends and maybe your friends, uh, I mean, your, your family are portrayed you. Or maybe your loved one, I mean, they let you go. Or maybe something, you know. But still he loves you. His love never changed. Maybe you are so ugly, but he still loves you. He accepts you. I mean, he loves you. And you have confidence in that love. And you, you, you stay in the love of God. And that is your freedom. And that is your freedom. No one can against you. No one can separate you from the love of God. You just need to be, stay in the love of God. You just need to have peace and confidence in the love of God. You know, I just wonder, um, when I read about Paul, Apostle Paul, I just wonder how that he um, suffered, you know, for uh, the gospel. He went through many nations and 
he went to the jail and the people they were portray him and he i mean he he was um a lot he he experienced a lot of terrible things in his life but he still standing strong in until he you know the re- all the rest of his life he gave it up for jesus i really i mean this is shock for me but i one thing i found i found i found out why did he can do it that because he stayed in the love of god he know that that the love of god can separate from anything people put him jailed and he have still in peace and he still writing you know the scripture and he still doing the ministry he 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 didn't stop he didn't stop he doing what he's supposed to do he did his put what he he did everything that what he's supposed to you know do he he done everything so why he can do it because he stay in the love of god is not from his own strength but is from holy spirit give him strength and he stay in the love of god and um no matter what happened in his in uh, his life people try to kill him he don't really care about it that i mean he stay in the love of god that is the main thing for us today when we stay in the love of god no one can against you no matter what happened in your situations you don't care about it because you know that god love you and our god is greater than everything and he is creator and he control everything in his hand and he has a purpose and plan for you that plan and purpose are good for you and he want to surprise you with his goodness when something happened to you you said why why me this happened why does this happen to me why me why me you know what the scripture said god work um all thing is god work for those who love all together for his good even what even don't even you you might not going to understand at all or you might not going to see this is the end i don't get it you know but god has a purpose for you his plan and his purpose is good better than what you hope what you expect you just need to stay in the love of god and live in their freedom freedomly and stay in there so that you can bring the glory of god that's what our purpose from this earth so i think i'm done so yeah so um we're going to worship god and we're going to thanks him for his great love and the freedom that he gave us today and um yeah let's stand up in our own feet and worship him just worship him and receive his great love and give the thanks to god worship team please You got something? You got something. Good. Amen. If you got something, it's good. Amen. Amen. We're going to start worship him. Forget about everything what happened. 
just worship Him and focus on Him. Amen. Amen. He's our freedom. He's our hope. Hallelujah. My change again. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. only beloved son put your name in there let's do it one more time for God so loved and he gave his only beloved son God loved you so much today how many of you are uh, confidently say confident confidently say that you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord amen amen we're gonna we're gonna do the prayer and it's always great to do the prayer together and uh, repeat after me. We're going to pray together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your, forgiveness. Thank you for your great love. I repented my sin and I welcome you in my heart. Take your place in my heart. 
I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's worship Him. Continue to worship Him and let's praise Him. Hallelujah. My change h a g o d I've been set free by the m e r c y You rest. 
from your heart I love you Lord you rescue me you are all that I want yes Jesus you are all We thank you, you Lord. We praise your name and we receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of the God people said, Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, You are free. And you are dismissed. You are free to go. Dismissed.